We have gone to the seminaries and have selected man that's great intellectual giants, men who are very brilliant in mind, men who have scholarships and are great mixers amongst the people and are great men in the neighborhood, which I have nothing to say against. Men who are kind in their ways of walk, careful in their ways of life, and how they conduct themselves among other men and among people, great men in their fields, which I do not speak evil of, God forbid that my spirit would ever be that evil. But still, that isn't what God chose for us. It's the leadership of the Holy Spirit, Christ in the heart of man. Many of those intellectual men that stands in our pulpit deny the real existence of the Holy Ghost. Many of them deny the existence of divine healing and the power of the Spirit. I was reading an article yesterday, I believe it was, a series of newspaper clippings from Jack Cole, the late Jack Cole, one of my converts to the Lord Jesus, who was a mighty man of valor in his day. I was called to question down in Florida because of asking a young child to remove its braces from its legs and to walk across the platform. And upon doing so, the child walked across the platform normally and fell when it got to its mother, all being a setup of the enemy of Christ. This young woman and her husband brought our gallant brother into the course of the land. And whenever church ought to stood by Brother Jack, whenever church man that mentions the name of Jesus Christ should have stood by his side gallantly, every man that calls on the name of the Lord Jesus should have fell to their knees in prayer. Yes. But instead of that, across the headlines of the papers, one of our great denominations said they joined hands with the atheists to condemn and prison Brother Jack Cole. Could you imagine a church calling themselves the name of Christ? But join hands with an atheist to condemn a godly man who was trying with all of his heart to stand for the Bible. But they did it. And then Brother Gordon Lindsay was at the rescue and when the unbelieving judge said, this man is a fraud because he taken the braces from that child and sent him across the platform and said he was healed. And he lied, and he did something contrary to the doctor's orders. Therefore, he has a defraud case against him. And Mr. Cole raised up and he said, Sir, I defy that statement, God healed the boy. And the judge said, I will ask any man in this court if that statement could be true that God could heal that boy on one end of the platform and let him be sick on the other end. If that statement can be proved by the Bible, then I say Mr. Cole has a right for his statement. And our minister raised his hand and he said, Your Honor, sir, 
May I state it? And the judge said, State on. And the minister stood to his feet and said, One night on a rocking sea, when a little ship was about to go to the bottom, all hopes of being saved was gone. They saw Jesus, the Son of God, come walking on water. And one of the apostles by the name of Peter said, If that be you, Lord, bid me come to you on the water. And he said, the Lord said to the apostle Peter, Come on. And he stepped out of the boat, sir. Walking just as good as Jesus was walking on the water. But when he got scared, he began to sink before he got to Jesus. The judge said the case is dismissal. Amen. We need Holy Spirit leadership. Amen. Not intellectual man. Saul, the son of Kish, was then made captain over the people. And he taken 2,000 men, and Jonathan taken 1,000, and Jonathan went down to a garrison and smote a bunch of Ammonites, Ammonites rather, and when, when he had smote them, Saul sounded a trumpet and said, you see what Saul has done. He began to get puffed up. Just as soon as a man gets to be some great doctor of divinity, or gets a little something behind his name, he becomes more or less a know-it-all. God, man, are humble man. God's people are humble people. When you see someone who says they have received the Holy Spirit and begins to separate themselves, seemingly not having the faith, going about trying to be something that they're not, just remember they haven't received the Lord Jesus. Amen. Then we find that the enemy set in and he was going to come into a little bunch of God's people and was going to pluck out the right eye of every man. That's what the enemy always tries to do, is pluck out both eyes if he can, so that the people cannot see what they're doing. That's what Satan tries to do today to every Christian, pluck out his spiritual sight, that he can only follow the intellectual sense of things and not the sense of the Holy Spirit leading him. So then, when they did that, when the great defeat come, then Saul cut up two great ox and sent them to all the people. And I wish you would notice here. When Saul sent the pieces of the ox to all Israel and said, Let every man that will not follow Samuel and Saul, let him, this ox be as this. Do you see how deceitful he tried to represent himself with the man of God? How, how unchristian it was. The fear of the people was because of Samuel. But Saul got them all to follow him because that the people feared Samuel. Let them come after Samuel and Saul. And how many times today have we heard it? We are the great church. We are the church of Christ. We are the church of God. We are the, the so-and-so. It makes the people get a fear and think that that really is where God's working. And 
They don't want the leadership of the Holy Spirit. They'd rather follow a man like that because they like to live their own individual life. They like to believe what they want to believe. Do you see the Holy Spirit is our judge? God never give us a pope or a bishop or anybody to be a judge. The Holy Spirit, the person of God in the form of the Holy Spirit, is our judge and our guide. Now, why is that? Please pardon this rude and most rude expression. I do not mean it to be mean. I say it from love. But the Holy Spirit says it's wrong for our women to cut their hair. And it's wrong for our women to wear little shorts and slacks and to make up their lips and face with paint. The Holy Spirit says it's wrong. But we want man to tell us that it's all right. As long as we follow me and Samuel. They like to live through six days any way they want to. I can go to church on Sunday morning and a fine intellectual college graduate with plenty of degrees can speak to them a little sermon that will, a few jokes in it that would tickle their ears and cause them to be entertained like some movie or television program. And say a little prayer over them and send them home with kind of a, a self-satisfied security that they've done their religion. That is not the will of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants you to live godly every day in the week and every night. Separating yourselves from the things of the world. But the church don't want that. They want some man who can, who can interpret the Bible the way that they want to hear it. They won't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking through the Bible. Many of them want to say the days of miracles is past. That's what tickles the people. They want to say there's no baptism of the Holy Spirit. The people don't want to act any different than what the rest of the world acts. They don't want to get on the street and uh, to have their face washed and, and man with clean accountants and not cigarettes in their mouth and... and uh, uh, cigars and pipes and, and the things that men do and women want their hair cut up real short and, and uh, little dresses on and uh, showing their farms and things that they want they, they want man who will tell them that's all right. Yes. Then the other night here come a man to tell me that because that I preached against such that a great denomination, about five of them, said, we'll drop Brother Ben and have nothing else to do with him. You'll either call those tapes back and apologize for him, or we'll drop you. I said, I'll stand with God. I said, everything that's in my life, I'll remain with the Word. And I said, well, should you not call back such and such a tape? I said, I have never preached anything in my life that I was ashamed of. Amen. I called back no tapes or no records. Amen. I remain with what the Holy Spirit Amen. says that I live by and die by. I'm not trying to say about myself now, 
But I'm just trying to give you an illustration of what's going on so you will see and understand. It's people want to be led by man. They didn't want Samuel. Then before they anointed Samuel king, or Saul king, pardon me. Samuel came to them again. And I'm going to speak just in language like he would have said it today. You may read it. He said, what is the matter with God being your king? Well, we don't see God. Well, I am his representative. Samuel said, have I ever told you anything wrong? Have I ever prophesied anything that didn't come to pass just as I said it would do? Have not I told you the word of the Lord, and I'll ask you this, have I ever come to you and begged any of your money? Have I ever took anything from you? Have I ever brought you anything but straight, thus saith the Lord? And God has vindicated it every time that it was the truth. And he sent a thunderstorm and rains. You know the scripture you right there to prove that Samuel was God's mouthpiece. And as Samuel perfectly represented today the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is God's mouthpiece. That speaks just exactly what the Bible says. Amen. That believes just what the Bible says. Yes. And won't vary from it one bit. Yes. But they wanted somebody who could tell them different. And the people could not say that Samuel's prophecy wasn't perfect. They answered and said, Samuel... All that you have spoken in the name of the Lord, the Lord has brought it to pass just as you said. There is not one thought you never did come to us and beg us for our money. You have supported yourself. You've never asked us to do any great outstanding thing for you. You've trusted in your God, and he has delivered you from all things. And your words are true. Everything you spoke in the name of the Lord has been just as you said. But still, we want a king. Can you see the discrepancy? Can you, you see the, the cunningness of the devil can work on a human being? Instead of yielding himself or herself to the Holy Spirit and listen to what thus saith the Lord is, for a pure life, an undefiled character, for a different life, a peculiar people, a holy nation, a odd acting people, they had rather coincides with the world and act like the world and go to some church that says, that's all right, just act like that and go on. Can you see what it is? They say there's no such a thing as healing. Oh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit was a framework to the church. In other words, then God taking man, took the Holy Spirit out of the church and let the denomination build it up. Never, never, there's no such a thing. The Holy Spirit, the word of truth, was to guide you until Jesus comes. Amen. But that's the way it, it went. Saul come into power. He got a great following. Oh, he had beautiful armor. He had singers. He had shields and he had spears. Oh, he outshined all the rest of the nations. And he brought them into a democracy. That was beyond anything that anybody had ever heard of. 
And that's exactly what our denominations and churches have done today. We have the biggest church buildings in the world. We have the prettiest dressed people in the world. We have the highest scholarships that can be brought. Like Saul's Frankie man who could take that spear and they can move it and maneuver to nation sphere then. They were trained people and all. But one day there come a time that there was a challenger come out. And it so excited the whole Israelite army till they stood trembling in their shoes. Goliath made them a challenge. If your God is what you say He is, you are the best trained. And He challenged them. They didn't know what to do. Their fine polished armors wouldn't work. Their spears wouldn't work. There was something they hadn't heard of before was taking place. And with all reverence and godly respects and honor and dignity and love and Christian fellowship, I say this. I read the other day in an African paper where that our son of Kish, our challenger of evangelism, one of Mohammed and challenged him. Billy Graham said, if your God is God, let him heal the sick like he said he'd do. And the son of Kish with the rest of the army quieted themselves and left the country defeated.